Survival, as in waking up at 4 a.m. to hit the road, as in road trip time, watching the day break through a window, as in Norton, Chegutu, Kado, Magueru, Blawayo, Fig Tree, Plum Tree, as in the dry stretch of barrenness between Gweru and Blawayo must be metaphorical. As in the sun down traveling through the Galagadi lands, flat for miles and miles, are we there yet, are we there yet? As in cheap takeaway supper, chicken licking, spicy soul food, spread the blanket and sleep in the car seat, there is no money for cheap motels. As in 2 a.m. rapping on the window, copper with his black torch saying move along, can't sleep here. Humid interior, there is moisture on the window pane. My name is Tarirondoro. Um, I'm from Harare, Zimbabwe. I was born in this city, but I've lived in a lot of small towns. Um, like Frank Sinatra's song, I've been a puppet, a pauper, and a poet. Um, I've done lots of things. I'm a scientist, I'm an editor, I'm a writer. I think it's, it's the same answer that there's right now, there's not really a big publishing industry. So the best thing is that you can self-publish. It's not like here in America where you'd need to um, publish through one of the big four to make a name. But at the same time, because the system has been disrupted, it makes it difficult because there's more burden on the writer than on publishers to get the word out there. The weather, <laughs> after, four months, after two months in Iowa, I'd say the weather, a lot of sunshine, <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about the quote at the front of my book, which says, I long to join thy song, but I have no verse, which is from, right, yeah, I'll look for it. It is a quote by Rabindranath Tagore. And I feel, although I'm a writer, words are more difficult for me than most people would think that, you know, you spend a lot of hours and hours reading and you might sit at your desk and not have anything to share. But when it just comes to you, it comes to you. And it's almost like a gift from, from the gods, yeah. When the, when the world um, went to chaos, we looked to art. And part of looking to art was relying on artists, you know, to tell the truth about all the broken things. But sometimes we relied on art to distract us as well. And I think that was as important. So I think because I did have a panel on this, um, which I had a long-winded answer about how um, writers sort of respond from a place of humanity as opposed to a place of re responsibility. And my answer to that is very similar, that if we are moved as writers to write, say, about COVID or about political crises, then we should. But I, I feel there is also space to give people a place to heal or a, people, a place to forget that the world is hard. Well, in the case that there is state help, I think um, grants for writers so that they have a sort of salary whilst they're producing their great works. Because I do feel a lot of people who would be writers don't write because they have to pay the bills. And people who are writers sometimes, you know, have to divide their labor and divide their attention between making money and making art. Um, but at the same time, I do realize that you know, whenever there's any sort of outside force influencing your writing, that it could end up influencing what you are writing. But I think funding would be helpful for most artists.
Um, I feel there are many, many writers who have inspired me, particularly, I think, um, Latin American authors, just because they write from the place of liminality. Um, I also love Russian authors because they, they sort of write from a place of absurdity. And I think having grown up in a period in history where there's a lot of absurdity happening, just reading the Russians was very, um, very fun for me. Yeah, it was fun. Um, but who I will read from, because I happen to have his book on my desk, <laughs> Um, is Amiri Baraka, and he always inspired me to write about something I'm passionate about because he's also a spoken word artist and he's passionate about, you know, in each one of his performances, he's passionate. And this is from Wise, Wise, Wise. Wise One. If you ever find yourself somewhere, lost and surrounded by enemies who won't let you speak your own language, and who destroy your statues and instruments, who ban your um boom ba boom, then you are in deep trouble. They ban your um boom ba boom, you are in deep trouble. Hmm. Probably take you several hundred years to get out. I've hardly done any writing. In fact, I've done no writing. Um, I've done more editing and reading. When I first arrived, I gave myself this task that I would write something, but no words came to me, so I've just been reading as much as I can from the library. Um, oh yes, you also asked if I've been to the US. Mm -hmm. No, this is my first time in the US. Um, something that surprised me is the level to which everything is automated. So the first time I went to Target, I expected to you know, have a teller speak to me, because in Zimbabwe, a lot of the times, the tellers will kind of talk to you whilst you know, bagging your groceries. And there I had to quickly learn, okay, this is where you put your money, this is where you put the barcode, and you know, even with the traffic lights, it's like, North Clinton, you may now walk, okay. <laughs> There's someone telling me to walk, okay, that's, that's different. <laughs> Okay, I think another thing I, I found particularly interesting was living with, you know, 14 other writers because I've, I've always sort of been used to being the outnumbered one. So this time it was interesting to live in a hotel with 14 writers and meeting them first on a human level. So meeting them on a level where we're discussing the weather and music and food and, you know, which spots to go and eat. And then you come to Shambo House for the readings and, you know, suddenly you realize that, oh, wow, I've been hanging out with this prolifically talented person. So that for me was great. And also the library, just, you know, the wealth of books and the wealth of knowledge in the library. And those are the two things that I am most grateful for. And those are the two things I will take home with me.